Hey friends welcome what if Naruto was create harem with Asia, Riaz, Kuroka and DXD world movie. No matter what, nothing will ever be normal for Naruto Uzumaki, it was nothing normal about being the Jinchuriki of all the tailed beast, it was nothing normal about having powers from the legendary sage of six paths, also was not normal for him to be celebrating victory of the fourth great ninja war with his friends, only for him black out. It wasn't every day where you feel like you are dreaming, then a spirit in that dream tells you that you have died due to unknown circumstances, now Naruto finds himself staring at a wall of flames. What the hell is going on? Karama. Naruto called out, I'm here kid calm down, Karama replied calmly. Naruto turned around to see his giant furry partner behind him, how can I calm down when I don't know what is going on? One minute I'm with my friends having a good time, the next I drop dead for some unknown reason, plus I had a ghost or whatever in a dream tell me that I died, to top it all off, we are in a room of flames. Naruto rambled. Hirama just sighed and looked to his left, how long do you plan to stay quiet? Naruto was confused, he was about to ask what was Kurama talking about, until a deep voice spoke up. I was just enjoying my new host reaction, Drake said. The blonde turned to see a red dragon the size of Kurama if not bigger also in the room of flames, Oi who the hell are you? He asked. I'm the red heavenly dragon of domination, DD for short, my name is Drag, Drag introduced himself. Naruto tilted his head, dragon of domination. What the hell since when did dragons exist? Matter of fact where the hell am I? He questioned. It's sorry to say this, but we rent in our normal world anymore, Kurama told Naruto. Said blonde turned to his partner giving him the look to explain further. I don't know how it happened, but when you suddenly collapsed, your body just faded into nothingness, that dream you had was an actual spirit telling you that you did indeed die, it's odd that I can still contact my brothers and sisters still, oh yeah, yeah I've been revived by a devil apparently, I don't even know how long we've been in this world, Karama explained. So wait we are in a different world. I've been revived. So what am I not the Jinchuriki of all tailed beast anymore? Naruto asked. Yes we are in another world, it's pointless trying to figure out a way back, trust me kid I'm pretty sure we are here for good, so you might as well get used to it, yes yeah I've been revived, lastly you still are the Jinchuriki obviously if I'm here, you just can't contact the others like I can, but you can still use their chakra, Kurama said. Naruto sighed, damn it I'm stuck in a world full of fire with two legendary beings, what the hell. I haven't even kissed a girl yet, he groaned. Actually you are asleep, we are inside of you, from what Kurama has told me about you so far, it seems I am sealed inside of you just like he is, you are actually recovering right now, your body was extremely weak when you arrived here, I was surprised that you didn't die, for three days you were on the verge on death, until the devil who found you decided to revive you, I would explain more. But I'm sure that devil girl will do so in my place, Drake explained. Oh so this is like my mindscape in a way, except instead of as in a room full of fire, that's actually kinda cool, but wait why was I on the verge of death? Naruto wondered. From what I can tell, the sudden events that happened to you messed your body up, on top of the fact that I ended up fusing with your body unnaturally, normally people with sacred gears are born with them, especially one as legendary as me, Drake said. Sacred gear? Naruto asked. Like I said the devil girl will explain it to you, just know that you hold power that's very very rare in this world, it'll be here to help you out along with Kurama here, Drake told him. Naruto just nodded, okay so what now? Now it's time for you to wake up kid, Kurama replied. As soon as those words were said, Naruto saw nothing but darkness for a few seconds, he felt himself waking up, he slowly opened his eyes. What he saw was something that he never ever imagined would happen to him in his life, a beautiful girl with long bright crimson hair, what really threw him off was that she was completely naked, it took everything in Naruto for him not to have a nosebleed, the blonde couldn't help but to just stare at the girl, he never saw a girl with a figure like hers. Even Hinata couldn't compete with this girl, Naruto's heart skipped a beat when the girl who was sleeping next to her eyes to see him staring at her. Why it seems you are awake now, Ria's voiced. Naruto was trying to comprehend exactly what was going on at the moment, he was talking to Drake and Kurama, next thing he wakes up to a naked beautiful girl. Speechless are we? Riaz asked. You are sorry I am just not used to having a girl beautiful as you naked next to me, Naruto stammered while he was blushing, he looked down to avoid eye contact, only to find himself naked as well. Why rent you a flatter? Riaz sat up and looked at Naruto. Naruto fell out of the bed once he realized he was naked, oh shit did we have sex oh my god I lost my virginity and I don't even remember how. He cried out. Riaz giggled, both of our virginities are still intact, so don't worry, the reason I am naked is because I can't use my power to heal you otherwise, plus I can't sleep in my clothes, they are way too uncomfortable, she replied. A.N. Gonna start using first person to refer to Naruto. 
I sighed hearing her answer, well I don't know if that's a good thing or not, I've never met a woman as open about her body like you. I'm not like most women my dear servant, Rhea smirked while crossing her legs. A blush crept onto my face again, I I can see that, I stammered again. All Rhea's did was giggle, so what's your name? Me and my friends found you unconscious by our clubhouse at our school, we had to be real careful keeping everyone else from seeing you, she asked. I took a deep breath, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, you probably won't believe me, but I'm not from this world, I told her. Rhea's raised an eyebrow in interest, oh my now that's quite the shocker, although it isn't that surprising that pouch of weapons you had on your waist, my name is Rhea's Grimmery, the heiress is the Grimmery family, she introduced herself. You don't seem all that surprised, I said. When you're a devil, you tend to see many odd things, you coming from another world is not unheard of, Rhea said. Oh oh yeah can you explain this whole devil business, Drag really didn't go into too much detail about it, I asked. Drag. Rhea's asked. Um Hess the red dragon of domination I believe it what he told me, something about being a rare sacred gear or whatever it was called, I shrugged. The crimson ruined princess was very intrigued now, the red dragon emperor is a part of her family now, who old thought, you are full of surprises Naruto, are you absolutely positive that you are talking about the red dragon of domination? How do you even know about it? She asked. While I was talking to him and my partner while I was unconscious, I don't see why would a giant red dragon lie to me about who he really is, I replied. I see, well you are a part of my family, I resurrected you by using an evil piece, when a person is reincarnated into a devil, they are bound forever to their master who revived them, have you ever heard of the game chess Naruto? Rias questioned. I thought about it, yeah it's like shogi in a way, I suck at both of them. Rias smiled, that's how devils basically run their clan, it's based off chess, me being the master in a king piece, due to the last great war between us devils, angels and fallen angels, there isn't many devil families anymore, it used to be around 72 clans named under the 72 pillars, out of all those pillars only a few remain. Most clans are extinct now, although there are still some surviving clan members around, however most either stay under the radar or join a different devil family, there are also who are evil, however most people assume all devils are evil, which isn't true at all, my clan the Gremory clan, is one of the only clans still to exist. I sucked in all of the knowledge as best as I could, okay so angels are real. What about God? Or any other mythical beings? I asked. God does exist along with angels, mythical beings like Nordic gods or any other legend, most likely exist as well, I'm not sure if magic existed in your old world, but it does here, Rhea said. Magic exists here, no way all I've ever known about is chakra, I can't believe magic exists, do you think you can teach me Rhea's Sama? I wondered. She giggled, I'm sure you can, also you don't have to call me Sama, just Rhea's is fine. Oh okay but Arendt you like my master now. Arendt I suppose to address you with that type of respect? I asked her. Yes I am, but I'm not overly fond with that thing, most of my other servants just call me President or President Rias, because I am the president of the occult club at our school, so feel free to call me that if you wish, since you are also now a member of the club, Rias informed him as she stood up. I blushed seeing her boobs jiggle, not that I have a problem with that, but how can I be a part of it if I'm not even attending your school? The princess smiled, starting today you will be Naruto, I'll handle everything don't worry, tell me how familiar are you with school. Well in my world, we are raised as child soldiers basically, I'm a shinobi who is trained to kill, we attend an academy to train us in that field from age 7 to 12, I come from a place called the Elemental Nations, as you already know, magic doesn't exist there, although we use the chakra in our bodies instead to perform techniques. Since I'm a devil now, I might as well tell you that I have a giant fox demon sealed inside of me, Hess my partner named Karama, my father sealed him inside of me, believing I could control Karama's power. Both my father and mother died the day I was born trying to protect the village I grew up in, I told her. Rias was shocked to hear that Naruto had such a rough life from birth, she gave him a warm hug, pressing her boobs against his chest. I was trying so hard not to have a nosebleed at that moment, my face was almost beat red, I wanted to hug her back, but I was too stunned to move. I couldn't imagine what you must have gone through, I'm sorry for the loss of your parents, I will try my best to make you feel as if you're a part of my family from now on Naruto, Rias voice gently into my ear. The word family really got to me, never in all my years in Kanoha has someone ever said that sentence to me, sure I had friends, hell I even had a godfather who trained me, even though I didn't find out he was my godfather until he was dead, it still pisses me off just a bit how Jiraiya kept it a secret the whole two years I spent with him, I'm positive he had his reasons. But that doesn't mean it didn't hurt that he didn't tell me, I thought of Team 7 as a family, and it was but it was a very dysfunctional one, between Sasuke going rogue, Sakura still in love with Sasuke, even though he literally tried to put a Chidori through her chest, Kakashi was cool for the most part, he had his flaws just like everyone. 
maybe just maybe things will be different in this world, it sucks that I can't be Hokage anymore, but maybe I can achieve something big while being a devil, while having a master will take some getting used to, Riaz didn't seem like a bad person, so it's possible this could turn out to be a blessing in disguise. Thank you Riaz, I hope I don't cause you many problems, I hugged her back somewhat awkwardly. After a few seconds, Riaz broke the hug, then started getting dressed, as much as I didn't approve of being a pervert, I couldn't help but just stare as she dressed herself, Riaz's every movement was mesmerizing to me. Damn you're beautiful, I blurted out, then quickly covered my mouth. Riaz just looked at me then smiled, thank you, she held out her hand, it glowed red as did Naruto's body, it only lasted for two seconds, once it died down, I was now wearing some short of outfit, a red t-shirt with a black blazer, over a white long sleeve dress shirt with black highlights, matching black pants with blue and white shoes. I was fascinated by this, so this is a part of magic him guessing. Yes it is, it's much more to magic than that however, it'll tell you on the way to school, how old are you by the way? Riaz asked. 16, I answered. Okay so you will most likely be a second year, he'll try to get you into a class with one of my bishops, my adorable bishop name is Asia Argento, I'm sure you'll find her attractive just like you did for me, Riaz told him. Naruto was looking forward to seeing just how better looking the girls here were compared to back in his old home, he has never seen a girl as beautiful as Riaz, it made him wonder how many devil's females were as good looking as her. On the way to school, Riaz explained more about how devils work, along with how school is, since Naruto was a shinobi, Riaz wasn't worried about him not being able to protect himself, she wasn't sure how he would fare against higher ranking devils though, Riaz also told him more about his sacred gear, it was agreed upon that after school, they would go to the clubhouse to see if he could access it. If he can already talk to Drag. Naruto was amazed at how different this world looked compared to his old one, everything seemed more upgraded, he was absolutely confused when Riaz was trying to explain her cell phone to him, all Riaz said was that they had to catch him up on many things very quickly. When they got to the school, Riaz had already informed her older brother Serzichas about the situation, so while they were walking to school, Serzichas got Naruto records handled in the school. I could tell my Uzumaki blood was kicking in because I'm feeling real energetic right now, not to mention I could feel my new devil powers flowing through my thought. When Naruto heard devils had wings, he really wanted to try to bring his out, but Riaz told him it won't be a good idea because someone walking past my sea, that led to the explanation on how most humans don't know that they live with other beings. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, I'm a transfer student, pleasure to meet you all, Naruto bowed slightly. He noticed the girls were staring at him with blushes on their face, I really didn't understand why they were looking at me like that, until one girl shouted. Oh my god his whiskers are so cute. One girl yelled. Many other girls voiced their agreement, while I could feel all of the males looking at me with jealously, this was the first time I ever appreciated my whiskers, if this was all it took to get girls to go crazy over me, then how can one not appreciate them? I took a seat right in front of this beautiful blonde girl with green eyes, she was definitely the prettiest girl in class, we made brief eye contact before I quickly looked away and sat in my seat. Five minutes into class I feel someone tapping my shoulder, I look back to see the blonde beauty trying to get my attention, I smiled slightly and asked, yes. Asia blushed slightly but kept her smile, Ayano hey, I was just introducing myself, I'm Asia Argento, it's nice to meet you. My eyes widened slightly, so this is what Riaz meant when she said I would find you cute. Asia blushed profusely, I I um thank you Yuzumaki-san. I waved her off, just call me Naruto, we are in the same club after all, I'd rather not feel like an outsider more already than I already do. Asia nodded in understanding, okay Naruto-kun. I smirked slightly, man that sounds wonderful coming from her, I thought internally. Class went by pretty smoothly, I talked to Asia for most of it, while her friend Kiryu Aika joined in from time to time, Asia told me about the other club members, overall it was six of them, but one of the bishops are sealed off because they can't control their powers. High school was a lot different than the academy, I can't even begin to understand the advanced math they do here, but I wanted to learn as much as I can about this world, it all seemed so interesting. When school was over, Asia led me to where the clubhouse was, the whole school was fascinating to me, from the design of it to the students who attended. We eventually got to the clubhouse, three people were in a room waiting, two girls and one guy. Hello Mina, Asia greeted as she stood next to me. All three of them looked up at us, I could instantly tell Kiba was definitely a pretty boy type, the only reason I even know his name is because Asia gave a description on all of the members to me. Hineko was in a strange way cute to me, she may look like a child, but she was definitely cute, Akeno almost made me fall out from how sexy she was, I had to stop myself from being entranced by her gaze, it was almost as bad as it was with Ria's earlier. Speaking of Ria's, I assumed she was in the shower since a shower was running in what looked like a bathing area, it was hard to tell considering the entrance to it was being covered up. 
Hello Asia Chan, RR is this the one who recently joined our little club? Akeno asked while checking me out. Man I cold even hide my blush no matter how hard I tried, you um yeah im Naruto Uzumaki, nice to meet you guys, im new to this whole devil stuff, considering im not really from this world, so please take care of me, I gave a slight bow. Don't worry about it Uzumaki sa. I quickly cut of Kiba from finishing his sentence, sorry to cut you off, but just Naruto is fine, all of you can call me Naruto, I'm not that fond about the whole honorific thing, I waved him off. Kiba smiled, ah I see then, well Naruto don't worry about it, you will get used to it pretty quickly, I'm Yudo Kiba by the way. I'm Kaneko Taoju, a first year student, I'm President Ria's Rook, Kaneko voiced. And I'm Akeno Himijima, Naruto-kun, Akeno smiled. Seriously how the hell did I get so lucky to be reincarnated by a the sexiest girl I've ever come across, then not only am I made her servant, I'm fellow servants with a group of attractive girls, I would be lucky enough to get one of them to even see me in a romantic light. Damn all of the girls in this group are fucking beautiful, I said out loud unintentionally. Quickly I covered my mouth and looked around, Kaneko still had a blank face, but you could see a tinge of pink of her cheeks, Asia was blushing profusely again, while Lakeno was giving me a look that made me want to just let me be ravaged by her. RR you are too kind Naruto-kun, Akeno said. I just nervously laughed it off, Naruto couldn't believe he just said that out loud. Eventually Ria's came out fully dressed, oh Naruto good you are here, she sat down at her desk. Yeah Asia-chan here showed me the way, I replied, Asia blushed at the suffix at the end of her name. From this point I began my life as a devil, I was taught many different things, like using his devil wings for one, I can fly faster with my wings than I can using my sage chakra, it took me a few weeks to get used to using magic, thanks to Ria's, Akeno and Asia, I was able to learn pretty quickly, according to Ria's and Akeno, I was unnaturally added. Another thing about magic was that I was able to tweak my seal holding Karama, now he was able to come out of the seal willingly while still being bound to it, due to this Ria said, I could use Karama as my familiar. That was pretty cool since Karama was technically a demon, a very powerful one at that, I also found out that magic is stronger than chakra, however a high ranking ninjutsu like the Rasengan is still very effective, I tried it out against some fallen angels we were ordered to get rid of. Ria's also trained me into the ground so I can use my sacred gear, I couldn't access my balance breaker yet, but I could do a few things with it, one was a move I named dress break, it basically a move that shreds the clothes of a person, it's very perverted towards females, as Kaneko called me a pervert because of it, it really didn't help my case that I enjoyed seeing all of the girls naked body. Hell I enjoyed seeing them period, another move I created was called dragon shot. Basically I channel my magic into a small red form of energy, then I fire it off shooting a high devil class attack, I could level mountains with it, me being able to boost my power was a bonus too, I was able to boost my Rasengan's attack power with it. I absolutely love being able to use magic, it was way easier to use than chakra, along with being more powerful, my friends too, I loved hanging out around them, me and Kiba were like best friends, we would always spar with each other, he would use his sword birth, while I would use my kunai with chakra covered with it, granted my kunai always broke because his swords were way stronger. But I was better than him with hand to hand combat, overall we developed a good friendship. Hineko was funny to be around, her nonchalant facial expression are hilarious when she's responding to certain questions, one thing I liked about Kaneko was her honesty, she never hesitated to tell you what she thought of something, calling me a pervert was definitely one of them, me and Kaneko also sparred like I would with Kiba. Eventually Kaneko opened up fully to me, even told her how she's afraid of using her own powers, apparently she can use Sinjutsu like me, but it's a different form than mine on version, so once I learned about her past including her older sister Kuroka, I vowed to Kaneko that I will always be there to protect her, that I would help her overcome her fear. To my surprise it didn't take long to help her accept her powers, she vowed that she would never become like her older sister, after that Kaneko developed a habit of sleeping on my lap, or she would just cling on to me, I didn't mind it one bit since I do find her really cute, she didn't have the biggest breast size, but Kaneko was still very attractive to me. Sometimes when she would lay her head on my lap, I would gently brush my fingers through her hair, I could tell she liked it, since she purred whenever I did it. Asia was an absolute angel in disguise, she was so nice and pure that it made me want to protect her from anything and everything, when she showed me her healing ability, I was highly impressed. Asia's skills with healing were greater than Sakura's and Tsunade's. But Asia wasn't a full-on doctor, she was good enough to get the job done, she even showed me around town sometimes, I found out that before me, she was the latest member to join, apparently some fallen angels were trying to steal her sacred gear, she ended up being reincarnated into a devil, once Ria's found out that she was dead, they only ran into Asia by accident. 
it was reported that some fallen angels were around the area, so Riaz and the group went to go take care of it, Asia also developed a close relationship with me, she was also caring towards me, when I would train, she would cheer me on her worry about me trying to kill myself, according to the group, my stamina training and suicide, that made me laugh, Asia was dear to me. I even had a crush on her just like I do with Kaneko. The Keno was confusing to understand at first, she was nice, but a sadist in battle, literally did not show remorse for anything. Sometimes she would tease me to get a reaction out of me, while I was able to hold my own, I have to admit it's been some times where she has gotten a reaction out of me, I can't even count the number I've nosebleeds I've suffered, she caused a good portion of them herself, a Keno would tutor me in magic, and everything else I needed to now about this world, I was forever grateful to her. No matter what Akeno was always helpful, I did get the chance to see her get pissed off, that scene told me to never get on her bad side. She could literally strike my existence with a bolt of lightning, Akeno even told me a bit about her past, I told her if her father wasn't an asshole the next time she sees him, she should at least try to hear him out. Akeno refuses to do so until I was finally able to convince her that by doing so may end up in her learning stronger magic from him, I told her that I would support her no matter what her decision is, as long as she's fine with it, then so am I, it was safe to say that I also had a crush on Akeno, that girl knew how to tease a man, just looking into her eyes turned me on. Ria's was my number one girl, no matter how I felt about the other girls, I had the strongest feelings for her, me and Ria spent a lot of time with each other when I wasn't with the others, granted we all hung out together most of the time, but the times we didn't, a good amount of my time was being spent with her or any of the other girls, Ria's just like Akeno, also taught me a great deal. She even helped me get my first contract, apparently in this world they have wats called an I'm, it really caught my interest, so I asked Riaz if she could show me how I can find some to watch, to my surprise, Riaz opted to watch an I'm with me, it was a nice way to spend time with my king, I also found out from Riaz that I was a pawn, at first I was a bit depressed at how low my position was. Then Riaz cheered me up by saying I was special because it took all 8 of her pawns to revive me, having one of the legendary 13 long Ina sacred gears can definitely warrant that many evil pieces, Riaz also showed me how to play chess, it was a way to help train my mind according to her, plus I was good company to her, so it was a win-win situation, sometimes I would go to sleep dreaming about Riaz, hell I would have dreams about all of the girls, I don't know why, but hey I wasn't complaining. Every time the wind would blow Ria's hair, I would be mesmerized by it, her ocean blue eyes made my knees go weak sometimes. Although Ria's had her faults, none of it mattered to me, I even found out that Ria's doesn't pursue relationships, because everyone only looks at her for her family name, instead of the her for herself. Hearing that pissed Naruto off, causing him to say that if it were him that he would treat her like a queen, not because of her family, but because of Ria's herself, I even swore that I would forever be with her through thick and thin. Unknown to Naruto, Riaz was becoming more and more interested in him, she felt jealous when he would talk to the other girls, while she knew Naruto was genuinely kind and helpful to everyone, she wanted him for herself, Riaz instantly berated herself for her selfish thoughts, while Riaz and the girls knew Naruto was a pervert, he was a kind and funny pervert. Naruto even declared since he could no longer become Hokage, he would aim to become the harem king, along with a high class devil. Riaz laughed hearing him say he would become the harem king at first, now she realized that it may actually be an achievable dream. Unfortunately Riaz is now in a situation that she dreaded to be in, Riser Phoenix had came and declared that she was his bride, due to the stupid agreement their parents made, Riaz vehemently denied him, causing Riser to try to insult her, that wasn't flying by with Naruto, so he punched Riser in the face, that resulted into a raiding game being held, the winner would keep Riaz basically, a week and a half later, the raiding game happened, everything seemed to be going great, they had took down most of Riser's peerage, it was only Riaz, Asia, and Naruto were left, Naruto was about to kick Riser's ass, until his body suddenly gave out on him. Riser took advantage of it and started attacking Naruto, to save Naruto, Riaz forfeited the match and begged Riser to stop. So Riaz was getting ready for her unfortunate engagement party. I on the other hand had just woken up in my bed, damn it what happened? I asked myself. Greg spoke up from my arm, you pushed your body too hard. Between using your chakra and my power, you didn't give your body enough time to rest, causing you to fall out in mid-battle. Ah oh, damn it. I fucked up. I fascipened myself as I sat up. Karama hopped on the bed in his miniature form, calm down kid, things like this happened, Karama said. How can I calm down when Riaz is going to marry that bastard riser? I yelled. That's when a red magic circle appeared on the floor, revealing the beautiful Grafia. I met Grafia when she first tried to inform Riaz on the contract, apparently Riaz wanted me to take her virginity in order to prevent her from going through the marriage, me and Grafia also had a couple conversations when we saw one another. Are you done raging Naruto-san? Grafia asked, I sighed, no. 
Grafia gave me a small smile, well save that rage for later Naruto-san, she then handed me a flyer with a magic circle on it, I looked up at her with a confused expression. In the words of Serzich's Sama, if you want my sister back, then come take her, Grafia informed me. Well this was a shocker, the devil king Lucifer himself was telling me to come take back his little sister, hell I assumed the guy would have used his destruction magic to obliterate me for trying to intervene in these affairs. Seriously Grafia? Is he really telling me to crash the party? I asked with amusement in my voice. That's what it sounds like to me, so I assume you will be doing just that then. She replied. I smirked, you damn right I am. Grafia nodded, very well, I will inform Serzich's Sama about your decision, that flyer is a teleportation magic circle, it will transport you to the party, with that Grafia disappeared via magic circle. Okay Drake it's time we make a deal, I told him. Are you sure partner? You rent too far from achieving balance breaker on your own, if you do this then whatever part of your body will become a dragon, that specific body part won't be affected by crosses and holy water or any other weaknesses devils have, but the rest of your body will be that of a devil still, Drag warned him. That doesn't matter, Ria's is being forced into something that she doesn't want, it's my job as her pawn to always protect her, plus I vaguely remember seeing Ria's cry before I passed out, meaning that guy is in for an ass whopping, another is I can't stand the thought of Riser touching Ria's, I growled. Well that partner, since you are so determined to take back your mate, it'll help you out, you'll only have 10 seconds to use my power before it gives out, Drake said as he began the process of changing my arm into a dragon's arm. A couple minutes later, Asia walked into the room with a small container of water, and Naruto kun, she said. Then she jumped into my arms and started crying, I hugged her with one arm, um Asia what's wrong? I asked. Thank goodness you finally woke up, you've been unconscious for two days straight, I didn't know when you were going to wake up, she cried into my shoulder. A smile formed into my face, it's okay Asia, no need to worry I'm all better now. Eventually she stopped crying and looked at me, are you sure you're okay? She questioned with worry. I'm fine Asia-chan really, remember I told you I have a healing affinity because of Kurama, plus I can tell you helped heal my injuries too, thank you Asia-chan, I told her. Asia blushed with a small smile, I it was nothing really, I'm just happy you're okay. Okay looks like it's time for me to go, I said. Going to get Gorya's Nichen. She figured. Yep, it's no way ill letting her suffer with Riser, I replied, take me with you. Asia demanded. I sighed, normally I would Asia Chan, but I think you should stay here this time around, I don't want to risk anybody attacking you, in case I have to fight off some other people, speaking of which where are Keno, Kiba and Kaneko. In the underworld, they are supporting Ria's Nichen, she answered. I see, well I definitely promised to bring our president back Asia Chan, I told her. Please do Naruto-kun, Ria's was so sad when she had to leave, I broke down in tears after she told me to heal you, Asia begged. I swear that but before I go could you do me a favor? I asked her. Back in the underworld, Kiba, Kaneko and Akeno were all at the party, Sona Citri walked up to greet them. Hello you guys, Sona said. Ara ara hello to you as well Sona Kaicho, Akeno replied. I'm surprised to see you all here after the results of the game, Sona admitted. Don't worry this isn't over yet, Kaneko said, nope he will definitely show up, Kiba added, ara ara I agree, Akeno smiled. Sona was confused as to what they were talking about, just when she was about to ask them, Riser came out to greet the guest. Greeting everyone, thank you all for coming to our engagement party, now allow me to introduce to you my soon-to-be wife, Ria's Gremory, Riser introduced. Ria's appeared in a magic circle, but that was quickly put as an afterthought as the door busted open. Naruto had kicked the guards through the door, Ria's was surprised that Naruto would come for her, Naruto. She called out. Ria's. I said. What's the meaning of this who do you think you are interrupting our riser was cut off. Fuck you I don't care. I'm here to take back Ria's, Ria's Gremory virginity is mine. I shouted. My statement caused many to gasp as I saw Ria's blush, riser didn't know what to exactly say, how dare you. Guards get him he ordered. Before I could even make a move, Akeno, Kaneko and Kiba stepped in to handle it. Don't worry we got this Naruto, Kiba said. The hour finally here Naruto-kun, Akeno voiced. The hour late Naruto-senpai, you should've been here, Kaneko told me. I rubbed the back of my head in a sheepish manner, sorry Kaneko-chan, I kinda just woke up 20 minutes ago, I laughed. Kaneko just sighed, of course you did. Well looks like you chose the perfect time to arrive, Serzich's voiced as he made his appearance. Serzich's Sama what is the meaning of this? Riser asked. Nothing just a little entertainment, as you see the rating games were a bit, he started to explain. Were you unsatisfied by the results? Riser questioned. 
no not at all after all it won't be a point in having them if I was in just simply saying that they left more to be desired, so I thought maybe a little match won't hurt to provide some entertainment, Serziches explained. Mm, very well then, Riser agreed. Serziches then looked at me, Sekriwate what do you wish for a reward for your service? He asked. The crowd all murmured, one person yelled out, Serziches saw me you shouldn't have to reward this low-ranking devil, he said. That comment pissed me off, but I didn't have much time to reflect on it, since Erzichas spoke again, we are asking for his service, so it's only right that we reward him for going out of his way to do so, now what is it you wish for? He asked. I want Ria's Gremory, I stayed with confidence, very well, Serzichas agreed. Ravel Phoenix, Riser's little sister walked up to me, just give you, you can't beat my big brother, she told me. Sorry to say this, but his win was a fluke, if my body wasn't exhausted I will bend at him, I told her bluntly. Oh is that so how weakling? How about you try to kill me this time around? Since you are so sure of yourself, Riser goaded me. I'm afraid I would cause problems for the Grimmery family if I did such a thing so no, I replied. Heh, Riser then turned around to his parents, Kasama, Tusan if this weakling actually does kill me, don't hold it against the Grimmery, this is my fight on my own terms, he called out to them. His father immediately nodded, while his mother looked a bit hesitant, it was easy to tell that she did not approve of this, however since Riser publicly declared this stipulation, it would make her family look weak if she disagreed, so she reluctantly nodded as well. Riser smirked then looked back at me, well how about that? So you have no worries, nothing will happen if you do so happen to kill me, however I doubt you will even get the chance. All I could do was sigh then looked at Serzich's, we made eye contact for 5 long seconds, that's all that approval I needed to hear from him, I won't try to kill Riser unless he forces me to do so. Me and Riser were teleported to outside for our fight, he stood several feet across from me, looking as smug as can be, I really felt bad for him, he was not about to get any breaks from me. You know Riser, I feel bad for you, I told him. Oh? Why would a weakling like you feel bad for me? He asked with the same smug face, however that was quickly replaced by confusing once I started releasing my demonic fox aura, my red cloak started surrounding me. The audience who were watching from inside were intrigued by what was going on. Because you made my Rhea's chan cry you bastard. I yelled at him in anger, my magic releasing in an explosion. Rhea's blushed hearing my statement to him, Munaruto kun why must you say such things in front of everybody, but I do like how he said my Rhea's chan, Rhea's thought to herself. Serzichas also had his own thoughts going on, hmm the red dragon emperor is an interesting one, I wonder what was the sinister red aura that surrounded him, if Hess this crazy about Rias, he may turn out to be a great fit for our family. My balance breaker armor appeared around my body, Riser was standing there stunned at what he was witnessing. Remember partner you only have about 10 seconds, Drag reminded me. That's more than enough time, I instantly flew towards Riser punching him into a wall, then flew towards him again, then started kicking his ass in the air and the ground, I was moving too fast for him to react. Everyone watching was surprised at how easily Naruto was demolishing Riser. it raised a question, did Riser only win because he caught a lucky break, most quickly came to the conclusion that his win had to be due to luck, because Naruto was treating him like he was a rookie on the battlefield. Ravel was stunned yet a bit turned on by Naruto's strength, she never thought her older brother would be getting beating so easily. Riser's parents also had similar thoughts, neither one of them expected Riser to be so outclassed. Hineko and Kiba were in awe of Naruto's power, while Lakeno was surprised but turned on by Naruto's dominance against Riser. Rias cold and believed that Naruto was capable of being so strong, it only added to her feelings for him, knowing that he was doing this simply because Riser was bothering her, he cold easily just accepted it, but here he was fighting for her. Ria's parents were also watching the fight take place, Zeoticus Gremory, Ria's and Serzich's father was interested in Naruto, he wondered just how did his family get lucky to have someone as strong as him on their side, considering he was the Red Dragon Emperor, he would only grow stronger. Ria's mother Venelana Gremory was amused by Naruto to bust into an engagement party, then claim that her daughter's virginity was his, took a lot of balls, now he was backing up his claim, but... Beating up Riser, well it seems we have a potential candidate for my beloved daughter, Venelana thought to herself. Sarah Erdbeil is a man who loves a good challenge, he decided Naruto Uzumaki would provide him that challenge in the future. Back to the fight, Naruto had just slammed Riser into the ground, unfortunately his balance breaker just ran out, he was tired, but he could deal with it, Riser slowly stood up, the look on his face portrayed that he thought he now stood a chance, this is when I decided to use my tojutsu, I gave him another ass kicking without using any of my chakra magic, just my basic strength, which was more than enough to break his nose with my last hit, the phoenix stumbled back as I held up holy water in my hand. Pear Iser. I called out. He looked at me with anger, then he was confused, how can you hold a cross? 
you're a devil. He asked. Well let's just say that this left hand isn't particularly mine anymore, I told him. You fool. You gave your arm to the dragon, you will never get it back, Riser yelled at me. I just shrugged then threw holy water into his face, causing his face to burn intensely, his phoenix flames tried to heal him, but because I enhanced the holy water with my sacred gear, it was a lot more potent, quickly I gathered energy into my sacred gear, poured holy water on it, while holding the cross against my fist, I charged at Riser at high speed. Reasir. Never bother my Rias chan again you bastard. I punched him hard in the face, sending him straight into a part of the building, he had pieces of the building covering him. Ravel quickly appeared in front of me trying to stop me. I smiled slightly at her, make sure your brother learns not to mess with Rhea's Grimmery's family next time Ravel Chan. Ravel blushed, h hi, she went to go check on her brother. As soon as I turned around, I was tackled into a hug by none other than Rhea's herself, Naruto, my precious Naruto, she spoke softly to me as she hugged me, I returned her hug. As if I were going to let you suffer, I told you that I would always protect you and the others no matter what Rhea's Chan, I assured her. Oh Naruto-kun, but you ended up giving up your arm for me, Rhea said somewhat depressed as she looked at him, another marriage proposal could come up at any time, she continued. Then next time it'll be my leg, then it'll be my eye afterwards, I replied. Naruto, Rhea spoke. No matter how many times, I will always come to save you, that made Rhea's blush, because I am Rhea's Grimmery's pawn, I finished. That did it right there for Rias, she instantly kissed me on the lips, I was absolutely shocked by this, it was technically my first kiss well first kiss from a girl that is, all I could do was attempt to kiss her back. She pulled away with a blush on her beautiful face, you may not know this, but in Japan, a girl's first kiss is very special to them, Rias said. Wait that was your first kiss, are you sure it's okay for an idiotic pervert like me to have the honors? I asked. The Crimson Ruin Princess giggled, yes I'm sure Naruto-kun, now come on, I'm sure my brother wants to say something to you before we leave, she hooked her arms with mine while leading us back inside. When we got inside, I was greeted with a few claps of applause, I looked at my friends, all of them were smiling at me. Good job Naruto, Kiba said, thanks, I replied. Oh Naruto-kun you did good, I'm happy you were able to make it, Akeno voiced. Naruto-senpai is strong, Kaneko said. I just sheepishly laughed it off, thanks you too, Naruto gently patted Kaneko on her head. Serzichas made his way over to me along with Grafia, Yuzumaki. Naruto, you did surprisingly really well against Riser. well I'm sure you are very satisfied with your prize, are you positive it isn't nothing that you want, he asked me. When I thought about it, one thing did come to mind, actually yeah I know you and Rias were able to get me an apartment, but could you actually get me a house to stay in? I would have more privacy with my training if I could just train at my own home, I answered him. It shall be done, actually tell me Naruto, do you have any dreams for the future? Serzichas wondered. To become the harem king, also be a high class devil, from all that I've learned about devils so far, you guys are definitely strong, I can't have Drag looking bad because he has a weak host, I replied. Drag. Oh it's the dragon sealed inside of me, you know the red dragon of domination, Drag is his name, Naruto said. Serzichas gave me a look of understanding, I see, well good luck to you then, I'm sure we will be seeing more of each other. Me and Serzichas talked for a bit more before he decided that he needed to go see about something, I turned back to my friends, well that was something, I never would thought that the devil king Lucifer was as laid back as he is, not gonna lie, I expected him to be nothing short of an asshole, I voiced. Akeno and Kibble laughed, Rias just sighed, as blunt as ever huh Naruto, the redhead said. Do you know it, Naruto grinned. While walking around, I felt my sleeve being grabbed, I looked down to see a beautiful woman who looked like Rias in the face, the woman has flax in her brown hair with violet eyes, what really reminded Naruto of Rias from this woman, is that her demonic aura is very strong, Rias aura is strong as well, but this one was levels above Rias. Hell it made him wonder how he would fare against this woman if he ever had to fight against her. Um hello. I said. Hello there Naruto-kun, please take a seat, Venelana told me. I did exactly as I was told, the tone in this woman's voice didn't leave any room for argument, it was definitely in his best interest to do what she told him to do. Somehow I didn't notice the man sitting next to her, he had the same red hair and blue eyes like Rias and Serzich's, he looked like an older version of Serzich's, the only reason he looked older was because of his beard, that when it clicked that they must be their parents. Allow me to introduce us, I am Ziodicus Gremory, next to me is my wife Enelana Gremory, I'm sure you can tell who we are, Ziodicus introduced them. I shook his hand with a firm handshake, it's a pleasure to meet you too Lord and Lady Gremory. Please just call me father, Ziodicus replied. Well that caught me off guard, so much so that it resulted into me coughing heavily. Here I believe you said that a little too early, Venelana voiced, and you think so? Ziodicus wondered. 
eventually I stopped coughing, I took a deep breath, if you say so then I will do so father, that would felt so foreign coming out of my mouth. Anyways you may call me mother then, all I wanted was to see the red dragon emperor who claimed that my daughter's virginity was theirs, I have to admit, you put on quite the show, I'm also very grateful for your actions, because of my idiotic husband, Benalana narrowed her eyes at her husband, who in turn looked away in both shame and fear. Naruto could understand the fear, just Benalana's gaze alone could cause you to break down if you are not mentally prepared, my dear Riaz, would have never been happy if this marriage was to go through, she finished. I it's fine mother, I'm sorry for making such a spectacle, I really hope I didn't embarrass the Grimory family, I voiced honestly. Little did Naruto know, the last part of his sentence made both Benalana and Ziodicus like him even more now, they didn't accept him to be so thoughtful. Don't worry, you actually made us look even better, it isn't every day you get one of the legendary heavenly dragons to join your family, Ziodicus assured me. You see Naruto, devils respect power, the way you demolished. Riser sure has gotten some eyes of young and older devils on you, now it's unlikely anybody would try to come for Rias, seeing you in action will make a lot of suitors second guess that decision, Venelana explained. Good to know, good to know indeed, well that's good, now I won't have to turn any more of my body into a dragon, before I unlock my balance breaker, I voiced in a sheepish laugh, while my right hand was rubbing the back of my head. Speaking of that, what you told Rias about giving up another part of your body to save her, were you telling the truth about that? Venelana wondered curiously. The gulp escaped my throat, you all heard that? I asked in an embarrassed tone. Both Ziodicus and Venelana laughed, yes after all everyone here saw your fight, it was only natural we heard your proclamation about Riser, making my dear daughter cry, as a father, you are definitely good in my eyes, after all a father hates to see his daughter in tears, to think that the Red Dragon Emperor would give a Phoenix Clan member such a beating over that reason, Ziodicus explained. I see well I'm glad you approve F father, damn it that sounds weird coming out of my mouth. So Naruto were you telling the truth? Venelana asked again. All I could do was sigh, then straighten my posture, look at them with a serious expression, yes I was telling the truth, your daughter had really been a big help to me the last few weeks, Shes showed, and taught me many things about this world, I've never seen a more beautiful woman than her, no one in that world can hold a candle to her. Even here so far I really haven't found many who is as beautiful as her, both on the inside and outside, I mean no disrespect to you mother, you are a beautiful woman yourself, well it is true that my goal is to become the harem king, if Rias were to ever become a part of it, I would try my absolute best to ensure Shus always happy, I swear to you Lady Venelana. Lord Ziodicus I will protect your daughter for however long as my devil dragon life lets me, I told them in a serious but light tone. Benalana eyes stared deep into my soul, as if she was trying to find any lies or deceit in my words, unfortunately I cold break eye contact with her, or it will probably not be a good look in my favor. It would seem that Lady Luck was on my side, a smile formed on her face, yep you definitely are good with me, if Rias were to choose you as her life partner, I would have no objections, Benalana said. Even if she's a part of my potential harem in the future? I asked. She shook her head, no, you see I'm the one who manages my own husband's harem, plus I'm sure you have heard how it's very common for devils to partake in polygamy. My eyes went wide hearing that she manages the Otica's harem. Yes I have heard of it, I just didn't know how would you feel about your own daughter being a part of it, I replied. Then Alana looked at her husband, look now consider it he is dear. His type are rare in the underworld nowadays, she said to him. Ziodicus nodded, you are right about that my love, Naruto we will definitely make sure that your new house is suited for the Red Dragon Emperor, it will take a day or maybe two to complete it. Somehow just somehow I had a strong feeling this was gonna be more than I asked for, thank you father, now if you will excuse me, I think I should be getting back to my friends, our friend Asia stayed behind back in Japan, Shes probably worried sick about all of us, I politely excused myself. Very well, we want you to come by our home to visit us soon Naruto, for you to be able to take Rhea's hand in marriage someday, you have to know a lot about our clan history and the underworld history, I'm sure Rhea's and the others have been filling you in pretty well, but it's much much more you need to know, Venelana told me. Shit it's definitely no getting out of this, the way she's making it sound, it's like I'm expected to marry Rhea's before I even reach the age of 20, I'm only 16 as of right now, Rhea's is a year older than me, so is Akeno, alright mother I will definitely come visit you all, maybe I can ask Rhea's if she or Grafia can bring me, it was good meeting you mother and father, I walked away after that. It didn't take long to find everybody, but before I could even say anything to them, some strong looking guy stepped in front of me, ah uh, how can I help you? I asked him. That was a wonderful match Sekar Uite, for a newly reincarnated devil, I didn't expect you to be capable of that much yet, I am. Sarah Erg Bale by the way, cousin to Rias, Sarah Erg introduced himself. 
I didn't know to be pissed off by him, assuming I was weak or annoyed how he chose this particular moment to get in my way. Naruto Uzumaki it's a pleasure to meet you sir Erikzan, although I don't really know how to feel with you, assuming that I was weak because I'm a new reincarnated devil, for one in my old life, I became the strongest shinobi in the world who had to fight against a goddess, I used only my sacred gear against Riser and some hand-to-hand -hand combat if I were to use even half of my full capabilities. I will have surely killed him, I shrugged. To my surprise, Sererg just laughed, ha. Huh. I like you Sekar Yuite. I look forward to fighting you in a raiding game someday, be sure not to hold back against me, he said. Naruto smirked at him, challenge accepted Sererg san, I left to talk to my friends. So guys are you ready to leave? I asked them. Actually Naruto-kun, how about you escorted Ria's butcho back on the griffin Serzich as Sama provided us? Akeno suggested. Huh? I dumbly voiced. I think that's a good idea Akeno, Ria's agreed. We all ended up going outside, I was sitting on the griffin while holding Ria's in my lap sideways, see you guys back at the school, I called out as the griffin took off. Outside watching from a balcony was Serzich's and Grafia. You know the griffin was supposed to be used as an escape for him to use in the worst case scenario, Grafia spoke. That may be true, but it seems things worked out, if I'm speaking honestly as an older brother, I'm glad that Naruto was able to fix our family's mistake, Serzich's voiced. To think that he would barge in and announce Riyasama's virginity as his, I don't think I've ever come across such a man who would announce such a thing in front of an audience like that, an audience that included her family, Grafia noted. Seems like he got the approval from my mother and father as well, I'm sure they were quite intrigued by such an entrance, even I myself was not quite prepared to hear the Sekiryute say that in particular, although I am grateful that he is on our side, I wonder how his life as a devil will play out, Serzich has said. In the air, Naruto was gazing at the sky, the underworld sky was definitely more beautiful than the sky in Japan or Konoha, maybe one day I could actually have a house here. That way I can have somewhere to stay at if I ever wanted to spend time here. Rias suddenly got my attention by caressing my face with her left hand, I took notice in his bridal dress, wow you look beautiful in that dress, I told her. Rias blushed, as blunt as ever Naruto-kun, but thank you, she smiled brightly at me. My heart skipped a beat seeing that smile, why you're welcome. Hey Naruto how come you haven't shown us more of your shinobi powers yet? I'm not mad about it or anything, I'm just curious as all, like you've shown us that you can walk on walls and water, plus the shadow clones and Rasengan, but if you're the strongest in your old world, you can do more than that right? Ria's asked. Yeah I can, the reason I haven't shown you guys more is because I didn't think it was a reason to, not that I didn't trust you all, I just didn't see a reason to since no one even asked me to demonstrate it, plus I'm more focused on developing my boosted gear and magic. It would be a lot easier if I could achieve my balance breaker at will, instead of having to give up one of my limbs again to drag, I replied sheepishly. Ria's leaned in to kiss my cheek, you know Naruto-kun, I won't mind you becoming a harem king, however only on one condition, because I know for a fact it's some other girls who have feelings for you, she teased. Please let her be talking about the other girls in the group, what's the condition? That I'm the number one girl, it's only fair considering I found you first, Ria said. W.W. Wait you're telling me that you have feelings for me I asked in shock. She nodded, yep they've been growing for you for some time now, I know how observant you said shinobi are to be so don't act so surprised, I also know that I can't hug you to myself, because that would not help you in your goal to become the harem king, to be honest, Naruto you are an attraction for women, hell it's no telling how soon you will lose your virginity, if I don't make a move. I absolutely refuse to let any other women besides me take your virginity, besides you already claimed that my virginity was yours, Ria's blushed as she finished her explanation. Well fuck, looks like I'm in for one hell of a life, the most beautiful girl I've laid eyes on, just told me that she wanted my virginity just like I want hers, things were definitely looking up for me, not to mention. It's pretty fun here, I went from being seen as a demon to hero in my old world, to being reborn as a devil who wields a legendary gauntlet that holds a dragon in it who is on his way to becoming the harem king, this was definitely a good substitute for Hokage, it didn't involve that massive amount of paperwork that was apparently every cage's arch enemy. I already had a solution for that issue with shadow clones, but looks like I won't have to deal with that. I see, I blushed as well. Thanks for watching.